I think, very optimistic view of uh, <laughs> education. I think we are starting to go to the bright side of the, of the, uh, of the coin. And I'm really happy to uh, introduce the next speaker, uh, uh, Daniel Bijon from Bordeaux, who is uh, heading uh, the Norasmus, which is a master program, and we'll be happy to hear about it. Oops. Okay. <clears throat> First of all, I would like to thank the organizer for the very kind uh, uh, invitation. It's a great honor for me to be here uh, at this HBP uh, uh, workshop, really. I enjoy it very much. And second of all, I'm very pleased to be here for the first time in Israel. I discovered the country. I discovered Tel Aviv and Tel Aviv University, and I'm very happy to be there. And I hope I will be back in, in some time, of course. And what I'm going to talk to you uh, now today is about the Norasmus program. And basically, uh, what Norasmus is, is an international program. It's an international program of neuroscience. I, I will give you a brief overview of what Norasmus is, and then I will talk about the lessons, what I've learned from Norasmus, and, and then from the, the promises, or more exactly, the challenges that lay uh, ahead of us. And uh, if you have to listen to me for one minute, this is the right minute to do so because you have everything you, you want to know about Norasmus here. This is a two-year international master program in neuroscience. It's 120 European credits. That's uh, the amount of work a student has to provide. It's, it's provided by six leading uh, universities in Europe and Quebec also in Canada. It's coordinated by the University of Bordeaux, and the goal is to provide advanced scientific education and training to the new generation of, of students with a program that integrates all the strengths of different partners and with what we think is very important, it's student mobility. To go abroad, to find other teachers, other students, to speak other language, to, to think in a different way, just to make your, your brain uh, better. And interestingly, it provides you with multiple of double degrees. That means at the end of a two-year master program, you get one degree from Bordeaux, for instance, and one degree from Göttingen University, or even maybe you can get three degrees. It's labeled by the Erasmus Mundus programs. We got 40, 54 students over the last three editions from all over the world. And very interestingly for the students, you get a lot of money. You will see that. So why did you, why did you started to, to think about Erasmus. Of course, we wanted to train the new generation of, of, uh, of students. We wanted them to be, to, be, to be there, to be able to apply this uh, new discipline, new, these new methods, and to invest in brain science, of course, to cure our own Alzheimer's disease, which is coming soon. So you have to work hard to, 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 to make us uh, uh, in good health. And, uh, and for that, we, we designed a certain number of objectives, nothing new in, in that side. We wanted to have a, a core curriculum of basic scientific education and training, and on top of that, we wanted to have some advanced education. And the training would be for original, original research project. And with the idea behind that, translation was very important. And right from the beginning, we wanted to train the students through academic skills, but not only to that, we wanted them to be aware of the importance of industrial research. And for that, we took advantage of the Erasmus Mundus program that was launched by the European Commission. It's about uh, uh, 930 million euros for uh, specification during that time. And to give you an idea, the Erasmus program is five editions, five generations of master students, and three and a half million euros. And, uh, uh, of course, this, that program, that European program, wants to say, okay, Europe is great in science. It, it can provide higher education. Though it was kind of advertisement program. And also there was the idea behind that we should share uh, our ideas, our cultures, with people from all over the world to create links that will later will be important to build uh, collaborations. And uh, technically, we applied to the Action 1 uh, uh, of, uh, of that Erasmus Mundus program. At the same time, we took advantage of one, uh, so this is an idea to give you how interesting it is for students to apply to the program and to get, to get selected. If you're a third country student, if you're from Israel, you're not from Europe, so you're a third country student, but look at that. You get 8,000 euros for the two years to travel. You, get, uh, uh, you have to pay 4,000 euros per semester, but this is paid by the European Commission, so I have nothing to pay. And you get 1,000 euros every month for 24 months. It's not bad. 
European guys are a little bit well less uh, treated. They get only 500 euros, the fees are less, but they get no money un unless they go uh, in third country partners. Okay, and interestingly, the uh, Erasmus Mundus program also allows to invite scholars, so we can get uh, them uh, 1,200 euros uh, per uh, two, uh, two period of two weeks. And also we took advantage of one of uh, our partners, Professor Arjen Brusa, applied the year before to the Erasmus Mundus programs and got the PhD program. So he, he launched that program to the uh, European Neuroscience Campus, which idea was to organize and formalize the research collaboration, but also the, uh, to launch an educational program. And so he, he obtained that, and basically we built Erasmus under this, uh, we built Erasmus and then we, we set up under the, the umbrella of the ENC uh, uh, network. So let's talk about the partners. From, uh, from east to west, to west there is uh, the uh, Charité at Berlin University, the Göttingen University, the uh, Free uh, University of Amsterdam, <coughs> Bordeaux University, and uh, the University of Coimbra. But we have also industrial partners. Industrial partners from uh, Belgium, Janssen. Industrial partners from uh, around Bordeaux, Fio Pharma, and also from Amsterdam, Silix, and also uh, the local government of the uh, region of, of Bordeaux help us. And uh, uh, I forgot uh, that we have also a third country partner, which is Laval University in Quebec. Quebec is not there. It's a little bit more on the left. Uh, and the, these are the people who run the program in Amsterdam, Leontine Gilgard, in uh, uh, Quebec, Laval University, Catalin Todd, Michel Horner and the Tef Childs in Göttingen University, Emilia and Carlos Duarte from Coimbra University, and Benedict Salmon from uh, uh, Free Berlin University. And uh, actually, I told you we got three uh, student generations from all over the world, not exactly from all over the world, from 31 countries, uh, uh, 54 students from uh, America, from Africa, from Asia, and of course, two from uh, uh, Europe. Nobody from Oceania uh, yet. And this is the, the, the pictures of the last uh, uh, students we, we recruited in 2013, as you can see, from uh, the Netherlands, from uh, Africa, Asia, and from uh, uh, America. And what, so those students are excellent students. They perform very well. And the first promotion of students, oops, sorry. It's not there, uh, it's later on. So a word about the, the program. As, as I told you, we wanted to have a core curriculum, but we have different partners. But we agreed on something that could be the basic knowledge in Norison that everybody should know. And providing also for uh, the first year some first elements of specialization, going right from the beginning to the, into the lab to do research, getting a personal training plan, some, something which is tailored for each student from his wish for what he wants. And also have uh, uh, joint workshops because all the students of all, all over the world in Europe and we want them to meet every year. And uh, we designed five study tracks tracks which were built around the strengths of each partner, Amsterdam Neurobiology and Neurogenetics, Coimbra the cellular aspect, Göttingen Neurophysiology, Berlin uh, Neuropathology, and a little bit of Bordeaux and Amsterdam because after that they go to uh, Quebec for neuroimaging. During the second years there is more specialization but again, again, uh, an emphasis about uh, uh, trainerships and again a workshop. And during these two years students or acquainted to uh, full language course to the culture of a country they visit. So if you're a German and you come to France, you have to learn a little bit of French just to buy your baguette when you go uh, to, to, to find your, your bread. There's a compulsory mobility. I won't go into the details of the European rules. They are very difficult to understand. And if you want to know more, you can go to the website. And there is a personal training plan, which is very important. And as I said before, they graduated. They were very good. And this is kind of uh, uh, what we do after the workshop. We, go, uh, in, we went in Barcelona after the last fence missing. This is the Dune Pilar, the highest sand in, in, in Europe, close to, to Bordeaux. And uh, there was some visit of castles too, for those who, who, who like wine. So the lessons I would like to draw from that program. So I think there are good points about this program and there are good points for the students. First, the uh, application uh, is very easy to fill. One of the students actually said that when he found it, it was so easy, he decided, well, I'm going to apply it. It's, it will take a couple of hours of my life. It's easy. And actually, he was one of the best students then. 
Uh, so top quality of applicants from all parts of the world with different backgrounds. It's very, very interesting for them to, to, to have this cross fertilization to meet other guys. Cultural exchange is very important. There's, they found in the network a, a true diversity, but the network is still as a human size. There are only six partners. And they found also a, a strong capacity expertise and experience of the partners. The curriculum is fully integrated. There's a mandatory mobility, but we worked it out, it's, it's good now, and, and, and they enjoy that mobility, it's really interesting. The uh, research facilities they can find are great. There's an emphasis on training. There is interaction with the professional sec sector. It's not perfect, but it's, it's, it's done. There's gathering meetings and annual workshops where they meet, where they exchange, it's very interesting. And during those workshops, we are on the grill because the students, they meet together and they make the list of what is not going well in the program and then they tell us and we discuss for three, four, four hours in general is the, the time we spent discussing the, the, uh, that, uh, that problems. And at the end, it's funny because some students, older students can contradict the younger students and reciprocally. So at the end, we find some uh, uh, good way to, to, to deal with that. And uh, uh, they get, as I told you, uh, oops, sorry. Oh, sorry. They get, as I told you, uh, dual or multiple diploma, good scholarships, and generally it's very good for the, for the future of a career. All the students I talked to you about before, the one they graduated, they're now doing PhD. Unfortunately, not always in Bordeaux University, but uh, there were quite a few who went to Berlin University, to Bingen, Göttingen University, and uh, in the States, in Australia, they went to medical school. So uh, it was very good for them. So it's good also for the institutions. Since we had the, the Norasmus programs, we, we, we are more attractive to the students at the international level, we are more visible. It's good for us. I learn a lot by discussing with my colleagues, by discussing with foreign uh, uh, students, by going abroad, by visiting different partners. The staff meetings are very interesting because we dealt with different cultural backgrounds as, as also for the administrative part, which is some, some kind of a challenge. And that in Bordeaux, that's for true. We improve a lot our programs by comparing what we do with what the other guys do. And we can get scholars, we get political and administrative support locally and at the national level too. And alumni, there's an alumni uh, association that is being built, but it's too early now to say that it's very good. But I can give you the example of Bordeaux. In Bordeaux, we founded uh, a student association, which is called the NBA, as you know, Neuroscience in Bordeaux Association. And we, we, we follow the students, the alumni, a couple of years, three years after they left, and we ask them, what did we do wrong when we train you? What do we, need, what do we need to do so that you, the future students, get a better training and are able to get jobs in the industry and the academy? Oh, there's some bait points. The bait points is when you, when you run such a program, it's full commitment for the coordinator of a partner. There's no time to do other things. You need a f highly qualified and fully dedicated manager. The person who's going to manage that has to be very well trained. And we were lucky. We got such a lady. And actually, she did a master in, uh, in uh, European program uh, management. That exists. There is a master specialized in training people to run and a European program. That tells you a little bit of the complexity of such programs. And we have to fight again ar against archivism. I will talk about my own university. Sometimes it's very painful to work with my colleagues, with my hierarchy, with uh, the administration to make things move. But it can be fun too. Sometimes regulations change. National regulation, Dutch regulation, changing all over the years, making things not easy to deal with. Visa issue is a nightmare. If you get a, 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 a student that comes from a country which has some trouble with, uh, with Europe or the US, it's, it's terrible. We would like the European Commission to set you know, an international visa for students, for teachers. You get that visa, and then you can spend the two years. But those students, they have to apply every six months or every year for different visa. And sometimes it's very difficult. And of course, as Meno said before, it's really difficult to make everything in the same port. And we, we are still far from reaching common criteria for everything. But at one point, I don't think it's such a problem. I don't think we, we should care more, as, as long as we get something that is reasonable and, and workable. So now the promises, or I would say the challenges. The challenges is nothing new on that slide. You take the workshop 
of this last couple of days, and you have all the challenges we're facing. They were all the same for everybody. New frontiers in neuroscience. We need to teach the students with what is going to be new, what is going to be their future. We need to train that new generation. We have to develop online tools and e-learning. We have some specialists in the program, but not enough, and it's a real question. We have to enhance industry academy education. We have to provide a basic computing education to the students. And finally, I would say that we have to think about the size of a network. We have six partners now. I think we can accommodate one or a couple of more, but no more, because we, we, we need to deal with such a complexity of the world. And this is not, not all the challenges. The last one is that the European Commission has decided to change the Erasmus Mundus and to turn it in the Erasmus Plus program. In that program, the question of sustainability is, is raised. And that means that for each euro the European Commission is going to give, you, the partners, have to, give, have to give one euro. So the game is different. That's why, no, that's not why. But uh, a couple of months ago, I, I switched, and I'm no longer the coordinator of the Erasmus program. This is this young, bright uh, professor in Bordeaux, Agnès Naja, who is the new coordinator, and would be in charge of that. I'm not quitting. I'm still in Bordeaux. I'm fighting to, against the arcanism in Bordeaux University, so she has something to, to build the program. So thank you very much for your attention. Okay, so one ECTS in the, in the uh, European system corresponds to 25, 30 hours of workload for one student. That means workload includes everything. The time you spent in front of a teacher, you spent, the time you spent yourself in, in working, the time you spent uh, taking examinations. That's about 25, 30 hours. So more or less, one ECTS is between 9 and 10 hours uh, in front of a teacher, something like this. It's two thirds of Many courses. Yeah, it's, it's still a lot, but training is included. For instance, uh, six months traineeship is 30 DCTS. Okay, so, but, but is it right that most of the time of a master's student in the Erasmus is teaching and less is really. No, half, 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 half. It's one semester of teaching, one semester of training. But the semester of teaching is four months, the semester of training is six months. And do they succeed to have a, a real output from? rotations or they don't need to, so they have well, to practice? The, the best students we got actually was a, a computer a computer science guy. He went to the program, he did, uh, I evaluated him after the first year, it was difficult for him. The second year is the co-author of a neuroscience paper that has just been published, he's the third author, so it, it was very successful.